Welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Today I'm going to be discussing five tips and tricks for brand new starters. So with the release day for Elite Dangerous scheduled tomorrow, I thought it's about time I'd do five basic new tips and tricks for people who have just started the game or are just about to start the game. So hopefully you're watching this, you're in your sidewinder, you're like, what the hell do I do now? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you some tips that are going to speed things up and going to make you understand the game that little bit more. So we have docking, we have five main ways to make money, we have a little bit of power management and how to get some extra speed for free, we also have how to outfit your ship, and also a little bit of understanding around docking around the starport and how you can get your frame shift drive to get there faster pretty much so let's just get straight into it so first up on the list I have the five main ways to actually make money and this is especially important if you just started the game and it's also these are the five main ways that you want to be making money throughout the game so first off when you've just started the best one to do in my opinion is easily bulletin board missions usually just delivering items now just recently in an update they've completely upped the mission um, quantity of bulletin board missions so it should be very easy to find a lot of missions for you if not though just head to a new system and a new starport and there'll be some missions waiting for you there and if you're completely bad started bad in a system then just restart your save very easy to do and it's definitely recommended so all you need so all these ones include delivering items collecting items for people um, collecting slaves for people doing crazy things that all um, interact with the station and this is the one that mainly interacts with the persistent universe that is being created on release so if you actually take some take a slave to a faction someone's not gonna be happy somewhere someone's gonna be happy somewhere it all changes all the time and this is where um, Elite Dangerous is really going to shine in my opinion. Anyway, on to the next one, Bounty Hunter. Now you can kill people, and you can kill people for profit because hell, they're bad people. Now the Bounty Hunter pretty much is killing people who have broken the law in a system. So if you're in the Empire system and someone's gone and annoyed the, annoyed the Empire ships in that area, they're going to have a bounty on the head of possibly 10,000 credits. You call that ship, you can claim that bounty, head to a starport and actually claim the money and get the credits from a starport in the Empire system. You can't go to a Federation system and get it, but you can definitely go to one in the Empire system and you'll find that a bounty is there ready for you to collect. And voila, you've earned 10,000 credits for killing someone who is annoying them. Next up, we have mining. This is where you head to a um, resource collection site and actually go ahead and mine away at the rocks and use them in your refinery, collect them, and then you'll be able to sell them at starports. I don't find this one too much fun, especially with the amount of pirates that you usually find at them, but for some people, this is right up there, and it is definitely thrilling with the amount of pirates that are actually at these resource sites. So next up, we have smuggling and pirateering. This one is really really good for people um, basically smuggling I'm gonna start with and what that is is basically where you collect stolen goods from people so you're gonna enter um, USS points on the system map and you'll find that cargo is just flying around everywhere now when you pick these up they're always gonna be stolen the only time cargo that you pick up isn't stolen is actually ones that people have actually cl have just thrown away they've, cl they've chosen to extract it from their from their vessel and leave it in space now this one is just like reclaimed or something I believe it's called but everything else you pick up is gonna be stolen and when you actually pick up this stuff, feds and everyone is not going to like the fact that you've got this in your cargo hold. So you need to smuggle your way past starport security and enter into the starport and sell it on the black market or to people on the bulletin board missions that are wanting the stolen goods. They're going to pay higher for it, but the black market is also still going to pay high for your stolen goods. It's very, very thrilling. Now, pirateering is pretty much just targeting ships that have a, have a hefty cargo hold. So if you come across an anaconda with 50 tons of gold in it, destroy the cargo hold, all gold gets spouted out everywhere, collect all the gold, try and dodge as many ships as you can that are trying to kill you for the gold, and then smuggle it inside a starport and sell it on the black market. So the last of the five methods is the best method, and it is trading. It's not the most fun method, however, it will bring you in the most profits, no matter what stage you are in the game, in my opinion. It just involves buying low from a high supply starport and actually selling it to someone who would like that product. For, so usually it's going to be a high demand starport. Basically, the more credits you have, have, the more items you can buy and the better ships you can buy which equals more profit in the end currently it's a bit broken but I'm sure pretty much tomorrow or today it will be fixed for the launch so yeah trading is easily the best check out my channel for loads more guides on it because I do enjoy space trucking quite a bit alongside my combat so next up on the list we have outfitting your ship now every ship that you buy comes with a base model everybody gets this model when they buy a ship however that model is usually a mix of everything it's gonna have hard points it's gonna have some cargo space it's gonna 
gonna have a discovery scanner probably. Um, what you want to be doing when you get this ship is customizing it to the way you want it to be. Every single ship in the game can be a bounty hunting ship if you want it to be. Every single ship in the game can be a cargo ship if you want it to be. Some ships are gonna be better at other things. Some ships aren't going to be good at other things. For instance, this is a lake on Type 6. Not going to be the best bounty hunter, but hell, I could bounty hunt if I wanted to. It just doesn't stop you in this game. It lets you do whatever you want. So when you get a ship, if you would like to upgrade an internal or hard point to have bigger, better guns or to be able to hyperspace jump much further with your frame shift drive, then all you need to do is head to pretty much a high tech system or an industrial system and they're gonna have a vast array of things to choose from. For instance, I'm on an industrial system right now and the, the only two options that I can't get right now is a life support and a different fuel tank. Everything else is, oh, options are open to me. But to be honest, thrusters, they end up have my class here, but hell, they have everything else that I need, and it's an industrial system. So if you want to upgrade your ship, head to an industrial system, head to a um, high-tech system, and your things will be there. For instance, if you would like to jump further, you can buy a new frame shift drive. If you would like more megawatts produced inside your power plant, then buy a better power plant. If you would like to travel at a faster speed while you're not in a hyperspace, then buy some better thrusters. If you would like to accelerate thrust faster, buy thrusters. If you would like to last longer after your hull's breach, buy better life support. It's all here, guys. For instance, um, the Lake on Type 6 doesn't come with this many cargo spots. I've actually put in, a, I've pretty much doubled the cargo space inside the Lake on Type 6. So you can do whatever you want in your ship. I'm not going to decide that. Just make sure you know what you're doing and where you're putting it because it is very important you know what is inside your ship. Okay, so next up on the tips and tricks list, we have a very, very simple method of increasing your speed for free without having to do any upgrades whatsoever. All we do is look in the bottom right of our screen. One is system, one is engine, one is weapon. As you can see, these are your power management systems. You can put more power to a system if you would like. If you're in combat, you probably want to be putting all your power to the weapons. If you need your shields recharging quicker, you can probably put all your power to the shields or system menu. If you would like to go faster and use the boost feature more often, then you want to be putting all power to engines. To do that, all you do is click the button that's set to engine, and as you can see, I'm going a full, well, 20% faster, 30% faster right now. And then now I can actually use boost much more efficiently. And because I have a much better power management system that I bought in my internal system, I can actually keep at a faster speed continually. And also while using boost, you actually turn faster as well. Now, if you want to be turning faster in any way without using and boost, all you want to do is slow down your speed until you're in this blue area on the speed management bar. When you're in this blue area, it is the optimal turning range for the type of ship that you're in. If I go faster than that speed, I'm actually going to be turning slower. So in combat, what you want to be doing, or if you're trying to get into a tight area inside a starport maybe, turn down your speed until you're in the blue zone and you're going to be turning at a much nicer rate. It's the same in hyperspace while you're in, um, you're, while you're using your frame shift drive. So make sure to always be in the blue zone when you're trying to turn in tight spots and of course if you want to be going at a ma maximum speed put all pips to engines and use your boost at all times and you'll be right as rain so next up we're going to learn how to dock with ease now all these types of starports actually have a huge range of what you can actually contact them to request docking some starports have a 7.5 kilometer range where you can actually start to request a dock so make sure you're in that range for those types of starports we are now requested to grant and as you can see above our radar you can see landing pad 35 now if you actually play a lot of Elite Dangerous you'll know that that is a landing pad near the front of the starport so I don't want to go in at too much speed and all you need to do is just aim your ship and use your lateral thrusters to actually get yourself in line with where you need to be now the bigger the ship the harder this is but usually if you're in a sidewind or anything you can just fly in it anywhere but if you stick to the green side this is the entrance point that you should be going in and when you actually get inside you'll see that there's our landing pad we've actually overshot it quite a bit and i'm in the lake on tight six so this is a bit of a beast to get <laughs> to change your speed but all you need to do is get in a general area of it and slow down you don't want to be hitting anything especially if you haven't got any shields going along and as you can see um a landing pad area has now popped up so all you need to do hover yourself over the landing pad this is for people who generally struggle quite a lot and as you can see, we're right in line now. If I just drop straight down using my lateral thruster that goes me down, I have landed perfectly. Make sure to get your landing gear out probably as soon as you enter the starport's entrance as it'll probably get out by the time you've actually reached your landing pad. You don't want to be doing it while you're hovering above the landing pad. So you've just left the starport that you was just docked at and you would like to now go to a new location. So you've selected it in your system map. Please engage the super crews and send me there. Well, why can't we, why can't it do that? Well, it's very, very simple. 
all your star ports have a mass lock and you can't frame shift drive inside of that mass lock area. It's usually around 8 kilometers, and by the time you're away from that area, you'll eventually be able to actually frame shift drive away. Now also, as soon as you've exited the star port, make sure to raise your landing gear. You'll travel at double the speed with those landing gears actually retracted and you'll actually be able to frame shift drive. Now, all you need to do in the bottom right is just look for when the mass locked disappears. Very, very simple, and pretty soon it will actually disappear for me. If you actually use boost, you'll get away faster as well. Make sure to dodge any ships that are flying around the starport, as you don't want to be hitting them at all. As some of them can be federal ships, and they won't enjoy your presence. And as you can see, we're away from the mass lock, and we can now frame shift drive. Okay then guys, so that is it for the 5 tips and tricks, I hope you've enjoyed, I hope they've helped, check out my channel for loads more Elite Dangerous content and I will see you all next time, thank you very much for watching.